I have some bad news and some good news and some bad news about the spread of diseases right now. The first bad news is that I'm not even going to be talking about COVID-19 because wouldn't it be nice if COVID-19 was the only disease we had to worry about? It would still suck, but we could like focus on it. But no, today I'm going to be talking about some other diseases we need to be concerned about, namely measles and pertussis. The good news is that like COVID, we have safe and effective vaccines for both of those awful diseases. The even better news is that those vaccines are way, way more effective at preventing infection, spread, and death from those diseases. There are a number of reasons for that, and one of the most important, if not the most important, is herd immunity. For the most part, we have a very high rate of vaccination against these diseases, and the higher the rate of vaccination, the more everyone is protected, whether they're vaccinated or not. I'm going to get back to that, but first I want to tell you about a study that was published in the latest issue of The Lancet Public Health. Researchers at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine poured over data on measles infections in England between 2010 and 2019, and they created a mathematical model to explain a particular trend that they noticed. Their models suggest that the measles vaccine, given in two separate doses to kids when they're about one year old and then when they're about four years old, is astoundingly long lasting. They estimate that after getting that second shot, 95% of people are protected for life. That is incredible. They say that the vaccine does fade, but only by about 0.04% each year. But now back to the bad news, that trend I said they noticed They found that the number of people who contracted measles during that time period were more likely to be vaccinated compared to previous decades. The number of vaccinated people getting measles tripled. But why? The model showed that the protection offered by the vaccine was superb. So what was happening? Herd immunity. If 95% of people were immunized, we wouldn't see these breakout infections. But in England during that time period, only 85% of kids got both doses. That drop of just 10 percentage points tripled the number of cases showing up in vaccinated people, even for a vaccine with an incredibly high level of effectiveness, which should give you some insight into why we're still dealing with COVID-19, considering that only about 80% of Americans ever got a single vaccination for it. You might think that measles isn't a big deal, but I assure you it is. About 100,000 people die from measles each year, and a World Health Organization study published in The Lancet earlier this year found that global measles vaccination efforts have saved nearly 94 million lives since 1974, though they point out that globally, the numbers are falling. The people most likely to die from measles are infants, but it's not great for older children and adults either. In 2019, researchers published a paper in Science showing strong evidence that contracting measles obliterates your immune system. Measles caused elimination of 11 to 73% of the antibody repertoire across individuals, thus making them more susceptible to other diseases. And the only way to get that immunity back is re-exposure or a new vaccination. Subjects who were already vaccinated for measles didn't show that damage to their immune system. It's not just England and the global south, the developed world where the number of measles vaccinations are dropping. After all, when the dangerous quack Andrew Wakefield made up the lie that vaccines cause autism and was driven out of England, he landed here in the United States and got people like Jim Carrey and Jenny McCarthy on his side. So the rates have been falling here too, which is why Oregon is currently experiencing their largest outbreak of measles in 30 years. There are dozens of cases, all of them in unvaccinated people, most of them under the age of 18. Okay, back to some good news. If you're concerned about your own immunity, like if you're in one of the places experiencing an outbreak or if you are otherwise at high risk, you can go to your doctor and get tested and they can tell if you are still protected. And if you're not, you can get a booster. Yeah, okay, that's not the goodest of good news, but I felt like I had to throw something in there because now I'm going to dive right back into some more bad news. In addition to COVID and measles, pertussis is also currently on the rise, something you need to be worried about, and there's an even greater chance that you are not fully vaccinated for it. Pertussis is also known as whooping cough or the 100-day cough, which does a pretty good job of describing why it sucks so much. 
Again, this is an illness like measles that can be miserable for an adult, uh, but is deadly for infants and also can be deadly or debilitating for the elderly or immunocompromised. Back when people were responding more or less appropriately to COVID by masking and isolating, pertussis cases dropped. But at the start of this school year, this month, the CDC has seen rates skyrocket fivefold with cases exploding across the United States. And the UK is seeing the same problem. Worldwide, the CDC estimates more than 160,000 children die each year from whooping cough. And if these rates continue to increase, it's inevitable that we're going to see deaths in the United States and UK. Unlike the measles vaccine, the vaccine for whooping cough is only good for about a decade, which is something that many adults don't even realize. So many people are walking around completely unprotected, which means they could unknowingly spread the disease to vulnerable people. While we can easily point to Andrew Wakefield and the anti-vaxxers to blame deaths from measles, deaths from whooping cough are really a failure of public health communication, not of individuals choosing not to get the vaccine. That's why my blog network Skeptic ran annual clinics to vaccinate people for whooping cough at big nerd events like Dragon Con back in the early 2000s. We don't have the funding or even the blog network itself anymore. Thanks, Mark Zuckerberg. So instead, I'm using this platform to encourage you to talk to your doctor about getting your whooping cough booster. When the vaccine is given to babies, it's called the DTaP, which identifies the three diseases it covers, diphtheria, tetanus, and acellular pertussis. Acellular just means that uh, it has parts of the pertussis bacteria in the vaccine, not all of it. When given to adults, it's just switched around. So you ask for the Tdap. And that's the final good news. Assuming you have health care, <laughs> you can help stop the spread of these diseases. Please talk to your doctor, get your vaccines so that you and the vulnerable people around you can have a safe and healthy winter. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks. <laughs>